welcome back to my channel. My name is Tori, if you're new here. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make four meatless crock pot meals. They are super simple and budget friendly, and they are just designed to make your week a little bit easier. And I'm super excited to share that this video is in collaboration with my friend Abby over at the Simplified Saver. Abby is total mom goals. She does videos about recipes, budgeting. She renovates her house on a budget. She does day in the lives and routine videos. She's just all around awesome. Abby is going to be giving you four recipes, so you are going to get eight total. Make sure to like her video and stick around and subscribe to her channel so you don't miss any future content. And if you are coming over from Abby's channel, hi, my name is Tori. I am a mother of two, a wife, and a teacher, and we live in beautiful northern Colorado. And I like to do videos on recipes, do-it-yourselves, and everyday mom hacks to make your life a little smoother. And I would love to have you as part of our YouTube family. So make sure to comment down below and introduce yourself. I always love to know who my audience is. And with all that being said, let's get into the video. are the ingredients that you're going to need. You're going to need six russet potatoes, one eight ounce package of cream cheese, one stick of butter. You're going to need two cups of vegetable broth and three quarters of a cup of milk. Start out by scrubbing and washing your potatoes. You're going to want to peel them and then dice them. Now you are going to turn on your crock pot, put all of your potatoes, your vegetable stock, and your milk into the crock pot. Like I said in the beginning of the video, I cook mine for six hours, but it definitely depends on your crock pot and what kind of settings you like to use. I do six hours on low, and I add salt, pepper, and garlic powder while this is cooking. So after your timer goes off for your crock pot, go ahead and put your stick of butter into a mixing bowl, one eight ounce package of cream cheese, and then you're going to want to get the potatoes in there as well. You want to make sure you get all the water out of your potatoes, so I suggest using a spoon with holes in it. And you don't want any of that veggie stock or milk when you're mixing because your potatoes won't be very thick. It really depends on the type of consistency you like for your mashed potatoes but in our house we kind of like the thicker kind with some lumps in it and go ahead and take your potato masher and mash that all together to serve mine with some cheddar cheese, sour cream, and a little bit of those bacon bits. I served my husband's with some grilled chicken with barbecue sauce and some steamed vegetables on the side. All right, here is my plate, here is my son's plate, and here's my husband's plate. Is it good? It's very good. Thank you. <laughs> Hey everyone, 
Allison, I have a quick recipe for you. We are about to run out of the house for the day and I realized, oh my goodness, I don't have anything for dinner. So this is really gonna come in handy. It's gonna take you three minutes if you have the ingredients on hand. No need for prep or anything like that. All right, so here is what you're going to need. You're going to need some cheese of your choice, some whole grain penne, or whatever type of penne you would like to use. I'm gonna throw in some zucchini because I like to sneak yeah. vegetables for my son. And I'm gonna use this uh, Rouse homemade marinara sauce. Normally, I would not be using this because of the price point, but I actually got it on sale for $3. So I went ahead and grabbed it because I've always wanted to try it. And then you're also going to need some ricotta. And I'll show you how I layer everything into the pot right now. And we are gonna start off with a little bit of olive oil at the bottom of your crock pot, just so things don't stick. And I'm going to be using that marinara sauce we talked about. Usually, no, I would not be buying this kind of marinara sauce, but I really wanted to try it and it was on sale for $3, which I've never seen it before that low. So what you're gonna do is pour a half of your jar in the bottom of your crock pot and then you're going to dump a half of your penne box into the sauce so there's half of the box in there and then you are going to put your zucchini or vegetable of choice you don't have to put veggies in here it's just an easy way for my son to eat some so half of your veggie of choice and now you're going to take a spoon and dollop some of your ricotta on top of that. I'd say about six dollops just so it is evenly coated when everything heats through. And then I'm going to put in my cheeses of choice. So I have some mozzarella here. Go ahead and put half of that in there over top. And then I like to use Colby Jack. Sometimes I use sharp cheddar just for a kick, but it really depends on your preferences. All right, and then you're going to sprinkle it with some Italian seasoning. This is definitely optional. I just think it gives it a good flavor boost. And then you're going to fill up your jar. I know we poured out half, but we're gonna fill up the other half with water just to thin it out a little bit. Shake it up. And then you're going to pour some on top, I'd say a fourth cup on top of that mixture. And then you're gonna repeat the process all over again. I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle the rest of that mozzarella in. I'm gonna put the lid on our crock pot and I'm going to actually cook it on low for four to five hours. If you are cooking it on high, you'll wanna do two to two and a half hours and you wanna check it every now and again. my crock pot just beeped let's check her out oh yeah it looks super delicious I'm gonna serve mine with some garlic bread and some steamed veggies and that's dinner crock-pot ready for you today and this one is really simple if you thought yesterday was simple this is actually super simple more simple than any of them how many times did I say simple <laughs> all right so this is kind of like what you have in your kitchen sink kind of recipe I'm sorry if you can hear my children behind me they are a little loud today no worries though um so you're gonna start off with any type of vegetables you may have so I have some asparagus I need to use up that's gonna go into the crock pot I have some onions and garlic. I have some frozen broccoli, frozen corn, and frozen peas. And then I have some frozen brown rice. So this recipe requires you to either cook your rice or use a frozen bag. I'm gonna put the whole thing in there. If you tried to put it in dry, you may need to cook it longer and you may need to cook it with some sort of broth or water or however you cook your rice. 
Okay, your optional step is to put some ginger in it. I don't really cook a lot with ginger, so I don't have that on hand, so I'm not gonna put it in there. So you could also use um, a fried egg if you wanted, it's really up to you. But then you're gonna use your soy sauce of choice, so I'm gonna use this La Choy soy sauce, and I'm just gonna put about, I'd say a fourth cup in, and then if you like Worcestershire or Worcestershire or however you say that sauce, go ahead and put some of that in as well. And then I'm also gonna um, season with salt and pepper and a little bit of onion powder. And this is going to be our fried rice in the crock pot. I'm gonna cook it on high for two hours, and I like to put sesame seeds and green onions on top. It's a great meatless option, and it's a great way to get your veggies out of the refrigerator if you need to use them up. So yeah, I'm gonna cover this. I'm gonna put it in there two hours on high, and I will see you when it's done. I know I will get this question, so um, yes, my son and husband do eat meat while I am meatless, so I try to give some meat on the side. Is it necessary? Not all the time, but right now my son is in his picky stage. Uh, he loves meatballs though, so I put some ginger dressing on them and then I serve them with the fried rice. We are going to be having a buffalo mac and cheese. I'm super excited to share this recipe because it is a staple. We probably make this once a week. Um, and you can add any meats to it that you want, but we like to leave it as is. And then I'm going to serve it alongside some barbecue jackfruit sandwiches with a homemade coleslaw. So I'll show you how to make both. The barbecue jackfruit is literally just jackfruit and barbecue sauce put together. And I'll go more in depth when I show you that. But the coleslaw is just your classic cabbage, onions, and mayo, salt and pepper, little red wine vinegar, and you're good to go. All right, here is what you're going to need. You're going to need some milk. You're gonna need pasta of your choice. We're gonna do shells. You're gonna need cheese of your choice. I have this and some of this sharp cheddar blend. The nacho and taco has Monterey Jack, and it also has some uh, taco seasoning in it, but you can't really taste it um, because we are gonna put this Frank's Red Hot Sauce in it. You're gonna need some butter and cream cheese. So definitely not the healthiest recipe, but super good and super awesome for a comfort meal in the fall. And this is a mini crock pot and I decided to do pulled jackfruit and barbecue in there today. I know it doesn't look the most appetizing, but it's super delicious and that's in place of pork. I really like to cook that on low for about four hours and serve it up with some of these plain old hamburger buns. And then I'm gonna also show you how to make a homemade coleslaw to go with it. So this should take us about four hours total and that is perfect because we are super hungry and I was a little late to dinner. So let me just show you how to do this. All right, I should mention we halved this whole recipe, so you need half a box of pasta. If you're serving more than two, double this recipe. You're going to need two cups of milk, one bag of your cheese, half of a stick of butter, about a fourth cup of your hot sauce, four ounces of cream cheese or half of the package. All right, I have two secret ingredients. Um, it's gonna be Dijon mustard and a pinch of nutmeg. I don't really know if that's secret or not, but that's a good mac and cheese in my mind if you can taste that nutmeg, especially during the fall because it really gives those savory dishes an extra kick. So for the Dijon mustard, I'm literally just putting about a teaspoon in there, nothing too much. And then for the other spices, you're gonna put garlic powder or garlic salt or whatever you have, salt and pepper and onion powder. Okay, because I am the only person in our house that likes coleslaw, I'm just gonna make it for myself. So I have cabbage, red onion, I have a carrot, 
some vegan mayo. You can use whatever kind of mayo you want. This is just the kind that we like. And then I actually don't have red wine vinegar, so I'm going to just use a lemon for some acidity and then hit it with some salt and pepper and put it on top of my barbecue sandwich. Just chop all of your ingredients together, put in a tablespoon of mayo and a squirt of lemon juice and mix it all together. All right, so I am a total Susan Meyer when it comes to mac and cheese. If you're a Desperate Housewife fan, you understand this reference, but I somehow managed to undercook it and overcook it. So this recipe has come in clutch for me. I will not make mac and cheese any other way. And it takes about two hours, two and a half, depending on your crock pot. I cooked it on high for two and a half hours just because I was here and kind of watching it. But if you are out and about, I would definitely put it on low and come back around three hours. All right, this is the end result. I served mine with coleslaw and a little extra barbecue sauce. And my husband's is over here. He had a lot of black pepper on his mac and cheese and no coleslaw. and that is it for today's video i really hope you enjoyed the recipes if you make any of them make sure to tag us on instagram and if you are new here we would love to have you part of our youtube family make sure to comment like share and subscribe and we will see you next time bye